edition of The Scoop from Mason County Press, brought to you by West Shore Bank. And today I'm joined with Jeff Mount, superintendent of Mason County Central Schools, and Dr. Jason Jeffrey, superintendent of the West Shore ESD. How are you guys? We're doing great. Beautiful day. It is. It's, we've been really lucky. Yes. Compared to last summer. So. so we are here today to talk about kind of an unknown topic that you guys know more about than most people do. What's happening this fall at schools? Why don't you tell me a little bit about this committee and subcommittees that you guys have ha had kind of going throughout the summer so far here at the ISD and kind of how that's working and how it's looking for the future. Yeah, I, I think one of the main things that's happening that folks are probably interested in is our COVID-19 preparedness plans. Yes. And basically, I, in a nutshell, what that means is that uh, each of the school districts in the state of Michigan have until August 15th to submit a plan to their Board of Education that basically outlines how they're going to respond to the pandemic in terms of three different scenarios. Okay. And uh, they get that submitted to their board by the 15th and then ultimately uh, that goes through us and goes to the state superintendent of instruction and the state treasurer by the uh, 17th of August. And uh, as you mentioned, we have a number of different work groups where educators from throughout the region are working together to try to figure out what that looks like. Sure. And uh, Jeff is one of many who have been really active in those groups and uh, maybe he can tell you a little bit about um, what he sees. Sure. Well, uh, you know, I would just go back in time uh, from, the, from the day we were told uh, schools are shut down in the spring as area superintendents, we uh, met daily, uh, virtually, uh, to discuss what we were doing, what we were planning going forward and such. That, uh, toward the end of the year, uh, changed to about two days a week. Okay. And, uh, you know, from that, though, came, now we, now we need to prepare for fall. So we were transitioning from last spring to a fall, a fall, just like you asked, the uncertainty of that. Uh, so we are, that's our focus right now. And as we focus toward fall, the, the state came out, the governor came out with her uh, reopening, roadmap to right. reopening uh, with the requirements that we have to put a plan together as uh, Dr. Jeffrey stated by August 15th. Um, all the districts are well ahead of that schedule, uh, but you know, having complete board action and things, it depends on when your board meetings are. Uh, but from that, you realize, wow, this is a really, really big issue. So uh, we did break it down into um, subgroups because no superintendent can do it all for their district, uh, you know, and such. So we we really wanted uh, some subgroups and people that could focus on a specific area. Mm -hmm. We had six different areas that we uh, had a addressed or we needed addressing and uh, they're focusing on that one being transportation and and others because each piece is a part of our plan that we have to be ready for in the fall well and you don't get much time i mean <laughs> the 15th of august is less than a month away so and i mean yeah. yes you guys have been meeting but you, you're never prepared to kind of go rogue from your typical you know school year and this has yeah. really been difficult for educators and everybody involved in education along with all the families and the kids i mean it's been a very stressful thing and so moving forward i know you guys at mason county central have some things kind of starting to be kind of set in stone yep. can you tell me a little bit about those sure i you know our plan is you know i'll say 95 percent written you know and we've been preparing for it from the beginning and like all those areas we talked about transportation and things but it was really important for us to see what the guidelines were that came from uh, the governor's uh, commission that, that put that those together uh, what are the requirements what are the suggestions and such we anticipated some of them you didn't have all of them uh, there but we were pretty darn close when it, when it came to the end of this is what we kind of expected and so, uh, you know, transportation, for example, uh, you know, just 
because the bus is here and it's reminding me of that, is that, uh, you know, our, our, all of our kids will have to wear face masks mm -hmm. uh, each and every day. We will have assigned seating, we'll have hand sanitizers as they get on the bus, uh, we'll clean the buses in between every run. We've ordered a 360 degree uh, uh, spray unit that will sanitize the buses between every run. So there's a lot of uh, safety measures in place with that, uh, but we will have a what we'll call a semi-normal uh, transportation schedule and routing. And with that, uh, you know, we'll have kids sitting together in family units, and we'll have assigned seating. So those are things that the health department stepped in and gave us given us some really good guidance on that. But uh, you know, that's just one small piece of yeah. a really big puzzle that we're putting together. Yeah, it's difficult. It it makes it quite simple. You guys bus, what's the percentage? Well, it's about 75%. 900 of our kids ride our bus. Yeah, day. I mean, and you have a, it's a big district, you know, yeah. and it doesn't mean that everybody's like right next door to each other too. So no. I can't imagine on in a normal school year how difficult it is to schedule that. So yeah. what else can parents kind of, I don't know, look forward to is the right answer, but like a lot of people are asking, should I homeschool my kids and they're they're panicking because they're like nothing's happening I don't know what do you want to say to those parents probably to like slow down a little bit and wait till we kind of unravel these things so they don't just get too much in a tizzy I would imagine well I think the first thing that I would say is if people are you know wondering what's going to happen I think that that makes a lot of sense because there are a lot of unknowns and I think we're feeling that a little bit too. We really have three different plans that we have to put together. One is if we're in phase one through phase three, and right now we have to be in phase four, but that essentially is a plan for learning at home. Uh, the second scenario that everybody is working together to uh, prepare for is uh, in-person instruction with uh, significant safety protocols masks, social distancing, cleaning, those kinds of things that Jeff mentioned previously. And then the third scenario, the one that we're all really hoping to get to is face-to-face -face instruction with some increase in terms of our safety protocols, but something that's pretty close to what people remember mm -hmm. prior to the departure in March. And I would just say, you know, we are working together every day uh, as school districts within West Shore ESD. We're even engaging uh, quite a bit at the state level and I think safety of students and staff is the top priority for everybody here. Number two, a close second, is student learning and we're really trying to get at those things by gathering as much information as possible. So a lot of collaboration with uh, the medical director and uh, the rest of the health department for this region. Um, a lot of collaboration with uh, folks uh, statewide, uh, you know, in terms of our professional associations and really other experts. So hopefully that helps and really an effort on our part to share information as quickly as possible. Sure. And if parents have other questions, is there a way they can like actually call somebody and certainly I know because I know a lot of parents are like you said, everything is very unknown and some parents need to hear it directly from the source. So yeah. how do they get in touch with somebody? Can they just call the school? Do they call the ISD? ESD? I'm still so used to calling it the yeah. ISD. Yeah, ESD. ISD. ESD, either way is fine. Yes. So. We are a service agency. It doesn't really matter what you call us. It just matters what we call So I would say for the uh, the individual parents and with uh, individual questions, it, it's safe to say they can call each district central business office because at least the central business offices are open right now the the regular k-12 school buildings are not likely to have somebody there so you know for instance we were fielding calls today i had sent out uh, uh some correspondence on our on our mcc app and it's on our website and stuff and immediately that triggered a few questions which was great that's what we want we want to answer those right. and we hope that the correspondence does that but everybody has their own little uh nuance to what this is my situation how will you take care of me and we can probably answer those questions uh, or it's one we hadn't thought of oh my gosh you know so let's let's put that into our plan and so that's why uh, it, the anxiety comes from unknowns and right now a lot of our folks don't know and they're going what's this mean what's this mean and right. our kids are gonna go back to school September 8th but what does that mean or they want to make that decision because we will have for those who still can't 
trigger to go back to school, something I set out today is we will have a learn from home model. And it, it'll be a lot of online, it'll be um, actually camera in the classroom uh, with the teacher uh, teaching, and there will be assignments that go with that. So we're developing that, but I'll go back to our committee groups. Uh, you know, sometimes we always talk about shared best practices. This is shared best information because yeah. best practices, none of us are practicing these uh, things that are coming to right. us so fast. And uh, you mentioned that, you know, we don't have a lot of time. Well. We don't, but we ha it's an eternity compared to what we had to do this spring. Because, uh, I mean, that was hours. overnight. Not even. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. You're not coming back to school. Now figure it out. Yeah, because that uh, was like a Thursday yeah. night into a Friday, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It was late Thursday. Yeah. And uh, Friday, we were like, I guess this is the last time we're going to see you. You know? Yeah. And that's we just. sad. Yeah, I mean, it and, was. And that's another thing, I think, why parents and students, besides the unknown, it was so abrupt. Yeah. And especially the little kids, or they had no kind of closure, or, you know, end of the year celebration, or they yeah. just all of a sudden, their whole schedule changed, you know? So sure it's, it is really hard, and it will be interesting to see what that looks like with these kids coming back, who, A, haven't been in the classroom for so many months, and whether or not they're at the level they need to be at, but just too, like, I don't want to say trauma, but kind of reconnecting them with the schedule, you know, being around other kids. But then if you have all these precautions too, that creates even more anxiety. So it sure does. you guys have your hands full. We do. We do. But I'll say, you know, we, we've really worked hard at, you know, focusing on the social emotional part of what we do. And we believe the face-to-face -face instruction is the best way to stay yes. connected. You can, you can visibly see a child in trauma, dealing with trauma and such, but we can't necessarily do a screen uh, or a phone call and such, so we really want face-to-face. -face. Uh, we know we have good people in place. We know we have good uh, mitigation factors and, and procedures in place to keep our kids safe and our staff safe, but you know, there's always that unknown, and there's, you know, and they say you can do the best you can, but it, it could still happen. There will be some illness. What happens with that, though, is we now have, because of last, last spring, heading into the fall and taking it to a next level, we are prepared for if we have to shut down school for a couple of weeks. You know, mm -hmm. not for a year, but for a couple of weeks, right? And we can still pull off, learn from home for all of our kids. Like it to think, I'd like to think it's temporary, but we will be so much better prepared for that. So if in the case we have to shut down a building or a classroom or a district for two weeks, we're all in a, a good spot to do that. That's you know, great. there's, uh, it, it, like I say, it's, we've had some time to prepare. We'll spend a bulk of our fall uh, professional development days training our staff. We use what's called Google Classroom classroom at uh, Mason County Central. They'll be well trained in that and they'll be ready to roll if we have to do the learn from home model uh, with a with a large group. And I think parents need to know too like if they there's a difference between the learn from home and homeschooling. Yeah. If they want to keep their kids at home the districts are providing it's not something that they have to go and totally research and buy all the you know yeah. equipment for it. It's something that they'll provide so because a lot of parents either are working or don't have the time or uh, the knowledge. I mean, I know a ton of people who have kids in high school who are doing calculus. I, I would be like, you're on your own. Usually about seventh grade is that mark of math. I can help in math through most of seventh grade. And after that, it's like, whoa. Uh, and, and myself included, who went through Calc 2 in, in college, psh, I couldn't even touch calculus anymore. Yeah, so, so I mean, there's another thing to add to yeah. the anxiety of everything. So. So the plan will be sent off on the 15th, right? Yep. You know, so with that, that that's a requirement of the 15th, and then we have to have it to the ESD by then. Okay. For, we have an August 10th board meeting uh, that we will probably have the final passage of that. Okay. But there's just going to be, much like today, I, I leaked out a whole bunch of pieces, but not all the details. Okay. Just kind of letting people know we're going to have a learn from home model. We plan on being face to face. We're we're planning for the uncertainty of the future, uh, and, and details are going to start coming in the next couple of weeks. So, okay. you know, and it's part of that is, you know, quelling some of that anxiety, but also going, we're on this, you know, and we're all doing it together. And I think that's the best message we can have here is that no single district is doing it on their own. Um, you know, we are 
our strength is in our collective knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, Dr. Jeffrey reaches out across the, the all the ISDs across the entire state, and they're sharing information. Just sent out some stuff the other day, some correspondence, and some talking points. Really critical stuff because we want it now. We got to deliver that to our parents. Mm -hmm. Now we have to make sure that we communicate so they know and they can make the best decision uh, come fall. But yeah, it's it's not homeschooling, it's a learn from home model. Um, and there will be uh, there will be teachers teaching uh, with, and you talk about the, the kids, we will differentiate instruction because some learned at a, at a pretty good pace in the spring, mm -hmm. some did not. And we, we will figure that out. We're professional educators. I, great staff here, but so do all of our districts in the area. Great, great educators. They love to live in this place. So they come here right. and they educate their cho our children, my children included. And you know, so we're, we're gonna be ready. And I have all the faith in the world that, uh, you know, all the districts will be the same way. Cool. Well, I guess the one positive thing that COVID did is bring everybody close together yet mm -hmm separate I guess that's kind of weird to <laughs> yep, say you know well but it, it's you know has been kind of a community built to like we all need to work together you know we're all in this together as they've been saying the entire time and yep. we truly are you know the parents have a piece the kids have a piece you guys all have a piece and the communities have a piece so as long as everybody keeps that positive outlook in mind I think it, will, it should roll out hopefully with only a few you know hoops Nicks, yeah. you know, there will be bumps in the road, and yeah. I think with that, go it, ha it has to be fluid and flexible, and we have to expect the same thing from our parents. You know, is it's, it's not going to be the same. It's going to change because circumstances will change, and we have to understand that. And I think we've created a society that understands that a little bit better now. Yeah. Is that things are going to look a little different, you know? And with that, though, I think we. We can expect that from our parents. I know that we're going to need to be a stronger partner in uh, the health of their children. They're going to need to check uh, temps in the morning. They're going to make sure that their kids are safe to get on that bus or to come to school. And yep, the the hard part and we've always heard, you know, it's the masks. You know, the mask things. You got, you, you know, my kid has to wear a mask. Oh my goodness. Well. There are other countries that require that every day, all day for K-12 kids, you know, and our kids are just as tough as those kids. So, you know what, we're going to have to get through this for a while, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, I don't know what a while is, but I do know we can do this. I mean, for goodness sake, we can do this. Let's get our kids back to school in front of our ed professional educators and have them learning the way they should learn. And, you know, and, and we'll take care of it from there. So one thing I wanted to also mention was uh, that we were, you know, we were really fortunate at, as a region to work with a, a, a researcher, a retired college professor, who helped us uh, develop a regional parent survey. And that parent survey actually had some questions where parents were asked to maybe pull a little bit of information from their students. Uh, we received a pretty comprehensive report of how our parents uh, were feeling about learning at home mm -hmm. this past school year and really about kind of what their thoughts, questions, and concerns might be going into next school year depending on kind of which phase we're in. So I just wanted to mention that we were really informing those work groups with that information coming directly from our communities and that's a really important part of what we're considering. Yeah, it's nice that th that communi communication piece is so needed because you need that input from the parents because they've been at home with those kids, you know, and they know their kids better than you can say a teacher knows them really well, but they still know their kids better. And to get the feedback from them and also the students, it's really, I think, a major factor that needs to go into this too. So, well, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Very good. Good you. luck this fall. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. For any other news, check out MasonCountyPress.com, and our weather is always brought to you by Smith & Eddie Insurance. And remember, we're going to go back to school. We just don't know how.